do you feel like a Black history maker? <laughs> um, that's such a hard question to answer because I, I, I imagine it takes some amount of ego to say yes. But um, I certainly think the opposition to the 1619 Project has put me in some type of historical framework that when you look at um, that the 1619 Project is the only project being banned by name um, in states all across the country that some of the most powerful politicians um, in the world um, have been speaking out against the project, then I, I suppose, yes. What we say in the project is not that radical. <laughs> It's actually based on, you know, decades of well-established scholarship, but the power of it is, of course, that it was in the New York Times, that it was led by a Black woman, and that it was, it, it managed to kind of permeate the membrane between the academy and popular understanding, and it also coincided the release within a few months of uh, the largest protest for racial justice in the history of our country. So I think all of those things kind of came together and that we are part of a larger backlash against uh, the racial justice uh, movement of 2020. But I, I do think conservative politicians have clearly showed that once again, they are going to use the age old uh, or the oldest wedge issue of race and racism and the 1619 Project and me as kind of its avatar has uh, been a convenient uh, response to that. Um, and I, I guess I would also like to think that at least some of the backlash is due to the power of the project, that it did allow uh, many, many Americans who had no understanding of this history, had no understanding of the way the legacy of slavery has shaped and continues to shape our country. Uh, it, it gave them a knowledge that they didn't have before. Ida B. Wells is obviously a huge hero for you and inspiration. What about her inspires you so much and interests you? Um, it's hard to give a quick answer about that, but in many ways, she was the first example that I saw of, uh, of the type of woman I would want to be. Uh, she was the first example I, I knew of a black woman investigative reporter. She was fighting for civil rights as well as women's rights as, and rights for uh, black Americans with lower social economic status at a time when many people were not um, fighting across those different barriers. She was, um, you know, an originator of investigative reporting techniques. She was one of the early women who hyphenated her last name when she got married and didn't just give up her name. She was a working mother, you know, just so many things. And, and she loved to shop. <laughs> and she really uh, was someone who didn't suffer for, she, she had a sharp tongue. She didn't take any mess off of anyone. And she was determined uh, always to work in pursuit of justice. So, I mean, for all of those reasons, I, I don't know many women like her now, um, but to have existed like that right in the period after slavery is just remarkable to me. So I take a great deal of inspiration from her. You have such a great sense of style. Um, what, um, how do you describe Thank your, you. <laughs> what's your style and what, what kinds of things do you gravitate towards when you're shopping? Besides ghetto fabulous, I, I don't know how, how I would describe, you know, I, I don't think I have a, a certain type of style. I like to be bold. I really try to eschew the, the uniform that people expect someone like myself to have. So, I like things that are that are edgy, uh, that are unexpected, and I love street fashions. You know, I wear a lot of J's. I like, you know, big gold earrings, red hair, lashes, all of those types of things. I just like to stand out. I like to be uh, unexpected. I love this notion that, um, you know, you you sort of uh, buck this idea that someone can be, oh, especially a woman, can uh, be academic and smart and investigative and on her on her stuff and then be ghetto fabulous and have red hair and big earrings and stuff do you do you, why does that do you think that makes people uncomfortable and why so i know it does i mean i look at um people who don't like me or my work how i present is one of the first things that they comment on so i know that it's irritating and i've even had throughout my career very well-meaning people um well-meaning older black people who have 
you know, sent me the email trying to guide me in my style because my style distracts from, you know, my intellect or how articulate I am. I've always tried to make it clear, like, I know how I should look. This is a choice. It's not just that I, I'm confused and don't know any better. So I know that it that it does bother people, but that's my... And, and 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 let me say, I'm not just doing to send a message. I actually like this. This is this is my style, um, but I also understand that it is important for me to send a message that a black aesthetic or whatever your cultural aesthetic may be, that has nothing to do with what is in here, how hard you've worked, how seriously you, you uh, can be taken. When did you know the project was going to be bigger than you had imagined? But then two days of it publishing. I had no idea what this project would do when it went into the world. I mean, as a journalist, I'm sure you know that um, you can produce something that is important or powerful and nothing happens with it, right? There's so much that has, that that is pulling at our attention every day. Um, this was a project on slavery and we clearly haven't wanted to grapple with it. It was a long form project. All the essays are long. Um, I just had no idea what, what people would think of it or, or how people would react to it. But when it, um, when it published, the day that it published in print, and I just started seeing all these videos and posts of people on social, like trying to track the magazine down, like saying, Somebody stole it out of the newspaper on my stoop. I went to Starbucks and they were all sold out. I had to go to five different locations to get it. Um, then I was like, wow, this, this is going to be, this exceed my expectations. So one thing about me is I would call myself a realist. Some might call me a pessimist, but I just never have really high expectations for things. And then I can I can be pleasantly surprised, but I won't be disappointed. So I just, I, I, I hope people would care, but I had no idea. And now clearly two and a half years out, this has exceeded everything I could have possibly imagined. People care. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I just, everything that has happened since then and the way 1619 is, you know, it is a permanent part of the national lexicon now. And clearly you wouldn't have Republicans trying to prohibit something that they did not think had power and reach. So yeah, I it succeeded everything I could have imagined. How do you feel about the impact that it's had? Yeah, I, I I definitely feel proud. It's the most important work uh, that I've done, um, and it's not just mine. What what is so beautiful about the 1619 project is it really is a symphony of Black America. Um, dozens of this nation's greatest black writers and historians which i would say this nation's greatest writers and historians have contributed to this it's it's like a a a testimony um and a testament at the same time um to both the descendants and our ancestors so it is truly a collective body of work in the most beautiful way yes i'm very proud